So the city of Decatur has recently started live streaming our meetings. Uh, we do this several times a month with council meetings, council agenda work sessions. We also stream the planning meeting, the morning, the board of zoning adjustment meeting, special called meetings, uh, or COVID-19 updates and just informational segments with the mayor where he brings a special guest in and does a you know an interesting little uh, stream where he just interviews and talks to people and that kind of helps people know what's going on in the city. Uh, we're using several things to do this with. Uh, might go into some more of those later. This is mainly just a test to see uh, what these instructional videos are going to look like. Uh, you can see we've got a meeting going on right now over in the council chambers. John Cross is over manning the data video and Brad Phillips is over there. He's the director. So he's kind of our floater and helps out with things. Uh, the thing I'm going to focus on today is the Behringer X-Air Mixer. Uh, it's pretty difficult to set up, but once you have it set up, it's pretty easy. It's a it's an affordable mixer. We've not had many problems with them, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the Behringer X-Air app that's on the desktop and uh, we'll just go through some basic settings from there. Thank you. So we're using the Behringer XR16 mixer in the council chambers and we also have one up on the seventh floor for when we stream or record events up there. Uh, just uh, what we have here are the inputs. These are more instrument type inputs so we usually do not use those but we the mics that we have in the council chambers are all plugged into these inputs. Uh, auxiliary 1 is what comes out for bus 1 to the live stream. Auxiliary 2 is bus 2 to the uh, Panasonic camera and auxiliary 3 is set to the bus that goes to the media if they decide to plug in. There's an app. The XR16 edit I have to. I'm doing this on the Mac, but you can also do this on a PC or a Linux-based system. It works pretty much the same on all of them. We even tried it on a Raspberry Pi, but we didn't have great luck there. So when you get ready to bring it up, you just double-click the app, and it brings up the interface to the mixer. First thing you're going to see is it's going to ask you if you want to connect. So we do. And the synchronized settings are generally, if we don't have a problem, we just use the mixer to PC setting. Uh, just say hypothetically the one in the council chamber failed and somebody had to run up to the seventh floor and get the other one. Once you plug all the inputs in uh, the way they are on the uh, one that you're replacing, you would want to select the PC to mixer app because these two mixers have different settings and they're a bitch to set up from scratch so if you had swapped it out I'd suggest doing the PC to mixer option which would take the last known good configuration off the PC in the council chamber and push it to the mixer but just for the sake of argument we'll just go ahead and do this it's going to show us that it's transferring the parameters from the mixer to the PC and we have our last known settings going to turn on a lapel mic now just so we'll see what it looks like when you're getting signal into the mixer and you can see that I'm set up on channel 3 and since this is a sure lapel mic I just went ahead and labeled it just a right click on these say we want to set up a separate channel for the WebEx we can name it and that way you can just look up here and see which ones you've got coming in uh, over here on the lower right of the screen we've got buttons and right now we're using the main left to right we can see that we're getting signal on this 
And main left to right connects directly to the amplifier, which then goes to the speaker. So this is what controls how loud and how things sound in the council chambers. We have bus one, which is the uh, output that goes into the live stream. We leave this one muted until they're ready to start the meeting because we generally start the live stream a little bit early. We run an intro video and if people are talking uh, before the meeting starts that uh, audio is going to go out to the live stream. So we usually only unmute this when the meeting is uh, ready to start. Bus 2 is the one that goes to the Panasonic camera which we have set up in the chamber. Uh, we generally leave it unmuted because there's nothing on that camera that's going to be going out to the internet unless we hook the encoder up and configure it to do that. Uh, the encoder is still hooked up to it kind of as a fail safe system but we generally just record to this if we feel like we need a backup copy of something. Bus 3 is the one that goes to the uh, media if uh, a local news station shows up and they want to uh, connect into our sound system. We just give them an XLR cable they plug in and we unmute for them. So usually bus one and bus three are gonna stay muted. We come back over here on this microphone. We've got some controls up top that we can uh, select. We have the 48 volt phantom power, which uh, the Audio-Technica Pro 44 table mics that we have uh, for the council to use require this. Some do not. You just have to look up the specifications on the mic you're using and see if you need it. Uh, the mic gain is how much the mic picks up. We can adjust that and we're going to start losing a lot of what we've got down here in the bottom bring it back up to 24 and we can see our volumes coming back up. The noise gate is used to turn the mic off basically unless someone's speaking directly into it and you can play with this. We usually try to set these so that if uh, someone you know is not talking the mic is not picking up. It kind of keeps uh, feedback and hum and background noise down. Uh, really we never change much of anything on here. It's going to reflect the same mic gain as what you set up over on this side. And this again is our noise gate. You can see that when I'm talking it goes uh, above where we've got it set. We could actually set it up a little bit higher since I'm pretty close to this mic. And when I'm not talking, the red bar comes down and lets us know that the uh, uh, threshold is set where nothing's coming through it. We can uh, control the equalization. Let's see. And now that I'm talking, you see uh, it's picking up uh, the bandwidth. This is coming through. Where's this thing I want to do? Okay, and here's a spectrum analyzer. We can see where the red is picking up uh, the stuff that's uh, higher in amplitude. And we can play with uh, compression, other things. Generally, uh, once we get that set up where we're not getting feedback and it sounds good, we leave it alone. And these are our sends to bus 1, bus 2, and bus 3. We can see that we've got stuff uh, coming in on all of those. This is our main left to right, which is going to be the sound that's going to be coming out of the speakers in the chamber. You can, uh, if you want to shift everything to the left channel or the right channel, you can grab this. The way we're set up is pretty much a dual mono system, and so we leave this at zero. Effects you can play around with. We generally leave these off because uh, they don't seem to add anything and we're not doing a musical performance or anything. We mainly just want the audio to come through from the persons that are speaking. 
and the meter which is again just showing us uh, you know we've got our input on channel 3 where I've got the sure mic we've got what's going out to our buses and we've uh, got our main channel so that's just pretty much a quick rundown uh, most of the time if you do anything uh, it's going to be to increase or decrease the sound in the uh, council chambers if we get up too high we start getting ringing and feedback and so we kind of pull that down bus one stays pretty much dialed in for what we need it to sound like uh, whoever's monitoring it uh, if someone is just not picking up or if they're a little bit hot or too loud uh, you know we can uh, call whoever's controlling or text them and tell them to bring their individual microphone up or down once we get everything set up the way we want it we like it come up here and we'll select save and we'll save it as a scene which will save all of the settings so we'll just call this uh, XR18 and I'm going to save it to my desktop, save, go, then when we get ready to load it, we can uh, go to the desktop, we come down here, and here it is. The way this would work, and it kind of works like uh, early on in the uh, video when we first started what we were talking about. Uh, transferring settings from the PC or to the mixer. Well, we can go in to our setup. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Let's try this. What we'll do is we'll initialize all settings and we're going to see that it set everything back to zero. Uh, what we would do now was go and select and load our scene. If we can find where I put it. And we will open this. And everything comes back. That's a, that's a pretty handy little fail safe feature to have. It remembers the settings of where we had everything uh, bus 1 and 3 muted and bus 2 not. So this is just a quick rundown of what we're currently doing with uh, our Behringer mixer. Uh, it's, uh, it's been pretty rock solid so far. Uh, we are considering upgrading some of the sound system in the council chambers to be a little bit more streaming friendly and hopefully sound a little bit better in the chambers. Uh, at that point we may go to something else, but this is currently what we're doing. Thank you.